Reflection. So we will now talk about uh, reflection, refraction and interference of uh, light waves. So first we start with uh, reflection and we have two types of reflection. So it depends on the roughness level of the surface. If the surface is a smooth surface, we call it specular reflection. This is where the law of reflection will apply. And if we have a rough surface where the uh, roughness will be comparable to or larger than the wavelength of light, then the reflection is a diffuse reflection. So it's called diffuse reflection. Okay, so first we talk about specular reflection. So we have an incident ray on this surface, which makes an angle, uh, inc angle of incidence with respect to the normal to the uh, surface, that's called theta i, and the reflected ray makes an angle theta r with respect to the normal. So we see that this, uh, these two angles, theta i and theta r, will be equal to each other if we have a specular reflection, a smooth surface. The direction of a reflected ray is in a plane perpendicular to the reflecting surface that contains the incident ray. So uh, this is basically the surface. Uh, basically, we can think about uh, the surface uh, extending like this. And uh, you can see that uh, from the surface we have a reflection and uh, the reflected ray is basically the incident ray and the reflected ray are on a plane that is perpendicular to the surface so they are on this plane so which is perpendicular to this uh, surface plane as we can see here all right so they're on this plane now <clears throat> uh, the angle of incidence and the angle of reflectance, theta i and theta r, are equal to each other. And that's called the law of reflection. So this is for the case of uh, specular reflection. However, if the surface roughness is comparable to or larger than lambda, the reflection is in various directions. So you can see here uh, we have uh, various directions for the reflection. And that's called diffuse reflection. We have another a special case uh, when the incident uh, ray makes a 90 degree angle with respect to the surface we see that the reflected ray uh, will just return back to the source so the reflected beam returns to the source with an angle of reflectance at uh, 90 degrees this is called retro reflection and this is this finds an application in basically jogging clothes so you can see uh, when you shine light on these clothes, uh, it, it's very bright. We can see all of the light reflected back to the source. Uh, so that's basically for the safety of juggers, especially at night. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at an example. The double reflected light ray. Two mirrors make an angle of 120 degrees with each other as illustrated in the figure. So this angle is 120 degrees. A ray is incident on mirror M1 at an angle of 65 degrees to the normal. Find the direction of the ray after it's reflected from mirror M2. So we want to know with what angle it reflects from M2. So if we look at this uh, geometry here, if we call this angle uh, delta, we can see that uh, this delta plus 65 is going to give us 90 degrees because that's the normal uh, to the surface. So we have here a 90 degree angle. So uh, the total of delta and 65 is 90 degrees. So the angle delta is 90 minus 65 which is 25 degrees. All right, so uh, now if we concentrate on this uh, triangle, you can see 120 plus delta plus gamma should add up to 180 degrees. So this angle uh, gamma will be 180 minus 120 minus delta which we found to be 25 degrees so that's equal to 
35 degrees. Now, if you look at gamma plus uh, the angle with the normal to the mirror M2, so we have here um, 90 degrees as well. So theta M2 plus gamma is 90 degrees. So theta M2 plus gamma is 90 gamma will be uh, 90 degrees. So we find that theta M2, the angle of incidence on mirror uh, 2, will be 90 minus uh, 35, which is 55 degrees. So we want to know the direction of the ray after it's reflected from uh, mirror M2. And uh, we know that theta M2 prime is equal to theta M2. That's due to law of reflection. So that's also 55 degrees. This is law of reflection. So basically we see that the, uh, the reflected ray will make a total angle of uh, gamma plus 2 theta m2 with respect to mirror m2. So um, the angle with which it will reflect will be 55 degrees with respect to the normal of m2. So we can say uh, this basically clarifies the direction of the reflected ray. 55 degrees with respect to the normal of m2. Now if the angle between the mirrors is now phi, so it was 120 degrees, now it's phi, what is the overall change in the direction of the incident light ray? So the incident light ray was in this direction and the reflected light ray is in this direction. So we want to know the total change in the direction. So it was like this, now it's like that. So the angle beta between them is what we would like to know. Now. If I concentrate on uh, <clears throat> this triangle here, um, the yellow triangle where I have 2 gamma on one side, 2 times 90 minus theta on the other uh, corner, if this is angle of incidence theta, angle of reflectance is theta, and this is 90 minus theta because they should add up to 90 degrees <clears throat> and these three angles alpha 2 gamma and 180 minus 2 theta uh, should add up to 180 degrees okay so um, alpha plus 2 gamma plus 2 times 90 minus theta should be equal to 180 degrees. So we find that alpha should be equal to 2 times theta minus uh, gamma. Okay. And on the other hand, you can see that beta and alpha uh, should add up to 180 degrees here. So uh, beta is... 180 minus alpha which is 180 minus 2 theta minus gamma now <clears throat> in this uh, triangle we have gamma phi and 90 minus theta adding up to 180 degrees so we have um, gamma plus 90 minus theta plus phi adding up to 180 degrees so that gives us for theta minus gamma phi minus 90 so uh, we can substitute that uh, for theta minus gamma into uh, beta here so uh, we can find that beta is 180 degrees minus 2 
times phi minus theta. Uh, phi minus 90 because theta minus gamma is phi minus uh, 90. So with that we obtain beta is equal to uh, 360 degrees minus 2 phi. <clears throat> the overall change uh, in the direction of the incident ray uh, for reflection from a set of mirrors which make an angle of phi uh, with the angle between the mirrors is phi is going to be 360 minus 2 phi. So we reach this uh, conclusion. Okay, so to summarize, we have two types of reflection, specular reflection from a snow surface, diffuse reflection from a rough surface where the roughness is comparable to or larger than the wavelength of light, lambda. Um, for the specular reflection, the incident ray and the reflected ray are on a plane that is perpendicular to the surface, uh, the reflecting surface, and uh, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflectance, that's called the law of reflection. For a rough surface, we have reflection in various directions, that's diffuse reflection. Uh, and if we have a theta, theta i angle of incidence equal to 90 degrees, the reflected ray returns to the source, that's called retro reflection, which finds application in jogging clothes, for example. <clears throat> then we talked about an example where we have two mirrors making an angle 120 degrees uh, between them. If, the, if a ray is incident on mirror and one at 65 degrees to the normal, we want to know the direction of the reflected ray from M2. And here we have looked at this triangle, uh, basically delta plus 120 plus gamma is 180 degrees, where delta is 90 minus 65 because we have uh, day, uh, 65 plus delta adding up to the uh, 90 degree angle. That's the angle between the normal and the surface. And from this, we obtain <coughs> gamma, 35 degrees, uh, because delta plus 120 plus gamma is 180. And gamma plus theta M2, the angle of incidence on mirror 2, is 90 degrees. So from that, we obtain theta M2. And from law of reflection, we obtain theta M2 prime, which is... 55 degrees since this is a mirror it's a smooth surface we have specular reflection uh, and basically the direction of the ray after it's reflected from m2 is making an angle 55 degrees with respect to the normal of mirror m2 if we have an angle phi between the two mirrors we want to know the overall change in the direction of the incident ray uh, for this we look at uh, this angle here, which we called delta initially, now this is 90 minus theta, uh, and this angle is also 90 minus theta because they should add up to 180 degrees. We look at the total uh, of 180 minus 2 theta, 2 gamma, and alpha, they should add up to 180 degrees, and beta is 180 minus alpha, they add up to 180. And on the other hand, we concentrate on this triangle where phi plus the gamma plus 90 minus theta is 180. So combining these three pieces of information, we obtain beta, the overall change in the angle of the incidence, uh, the angle of the incident rate to be 360 minus 2 phi.